Mr. Jiro. Okay, thank you. I'd like to highlight uh, three major areas in my intervention. Number one, the danger of uh, proliferation of uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, warnings were given during this forum, including the previous session, on the North Korean nuclear threat. The most challenging for world peace and stability at the moment is the threat of proliferation of WMD and mostly nuclear weapons, uh, which might trigger nuclear war. Unless North Korean ambition of becoming another nuclear weapon state is stopped and reversed within one, two years, there is the real danger of nuclear proliferation. The global community took measures through a series of UN Security Council resolutions to sanction North Korea to accept denuclearization. Uh, entire world should accelerate and to cooperate to bring tangible outcome. Otherwise, more countries may go nuclear to defend against North Korean threat. It will mean the demise of non-proliferation regime, thus the raison d'etre of the IAEA. The permanent members of the UN Security Council must assume the primordial responsibility of stopping proliferation as they have their prime responsibility of, and mandate of preserving peace and stability of the world. For this, they have the bit of power and more authorities. They should overcome political power bickering or preoccupation with real politics. They should be re really united this time to address North Korean nuclear issue. Otherwise, the world will be far more chaotic and volatile. The world should join hands to press North Korea to change the cap and come back to conference table. Its human rights situation should also be actively raised and pursued. We need a comprehensive package plan to resolve North Korean nuclear crisis. Uh, when North Korea comes back to a conference table and achieves full denuclearization, there should be enough, enough compensatory measures to help build its economy in addition to its own survival. We want to see concrete progress be made through uh, uh, ongoing President Trump's tour of visit to East Asian countries. We need peaceful resolution, not a war. We Koreans have suffered too much for the past thousand years. But we should be brave and determined to tackle this North Korean threat. But when time comes, when conditions are met, we need not be afraid of talking to North Korean leadership. It is my view that the Iranian nuclear deal should be upheld. It would be very difficult to envisage another solution. I hope personally that the U.S. Congress will take sound decision on this matter. Emergence of another nuclear weapon state should be blocked uh, in the name of humanity, a European partners' constant pressure, and urge North Korea for keep change. And mostly, they are giving valuable recommendation and advice to China and Russia is necessary to help find the resolution of the current crisis. Next, uh, there is the need of further promoting a Northeast Asian security structure. In East Asia, tensions go beyond the boundary of North Korean peninsula. Paradox of good economic performance and partnership, but lack of any permanent security cooperation mechanism. Whenever there is a problem, we have to go to always the Southeast Asia to discuss our own matter there. East Asia is the only region that lacks security dialogue mechanism a tailor-made regional security mechanism should be installed. When North Korea abandons nuclear ambitions, it may also join in the process for strengthening the basis for, for its survival. Among key partners, there is already an annually held assistant minister level meetings and various networks of meetings on soft agenda issues such as climate change, nuclear safety and digest management, etc. We need enlightened leaders and networks of influential intellectuals for attaining this goal, to, this goal to prevent the sources of conflict and nurture the habit of cooperation in, in this part of the world. We need to groom people believing in this cause. As Europe showed a good example, Europe can continue to encourage us, East Asians, for consolidation of more regional cooperation. Uh, then my second point is to uh, uh, relating, uh, is relating to the danger of weakening basis of democracy and how we should address. 
Uh, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, there was euphoria over the success, complete success of democracy. Uh, but after the Arab Spring, the spread of democracy seems to falter, as was discussed during our session. As the U.S. new government focuses more on America first policy, there is the worry of weakening support for global values. This might cause less emphasis on universal values across the world. And during our discussions on international trade and others, and investment and economy, some proposals were tabled to address current challenges on multilateralism, namely WTO, and et cetera. We need to harness global values for this, I hope. Uh, moderate countries, maybe middle countries, should endeavor to uphold global values in this regard. Europe should continue to play a leading role. Europe has to uphold global values while the United States should regain its house in order. East Asian countries should also join hands in upholding global values. South Korea and Japan should know how to work together for this direction, winning over their difference about the past. Canada and Australia may pitch into other moderate countries, such as our host country, can register their voices. Instead of remaining passive, like-minded countries can collect their wisdom and creative ideas to help amend current problematics. In many fields, including climate change issue, SDGs implementation, China will be a key contributor to the global cause, and we should not be afraid of talking to China. My third point is the potential for new tripartite cooperation and burden sharing. In the course of providing foreign investment and assistance in Africa, besides Europe and the United States, China, Japan, and South Korea assume growing role. Likewise, Northeast Asian countries can share their burden, uh, the burden of the world for governance and development assistance. It would be good if Northeast Asian countries increase further mutual communication and policy coordination. People once talked about a trilateral governance structure of United States, Europe, and Japan, Brzezinski, for example, in 20 years' time ago. One could now envisage a new type of trilateral structures among the United States, Europe, and Northeast Asia for better governance and to uphold global values. It could be a means to tame down tension among us Northeast Asian states and help nurture the spirit of cooperation instead of individual self-assertiveness that many worry about or forming a block against each other. The current China, Japan, Korea trilateral cooperation mechanism need to be revamped constantly. By linking India and ASEAN countries and in good liaison with the other partners, one could also vitalize existing multilateral and regional institutions so that these regional summit gatherings such as Asia Europe meeting and APEC be fully used for change reform and becoming stronger and better structured for promoting peace and stability and economic growth. For these all purposes, we need our political leaders having wisdom, broader eyesight, new vision, and leadership. And we, the intellectuals, should educate them to the extent possible. If not, we should groom future leaders. We should groom future leaders, like in the previous session. I hope that World Policy Conference will continue to carry out such an endeavor to foster a more open and tolerant world. Thank you.